A secret esoteric order known as Candela Obscura has used their centuries of knowledge to fight back. It's really happening. Take a look at this. We're thrilled to announce Candela Obscura, a brand new game in a brand new world using a brand new system. For the first time in their eight year history, Critical Role is launching an ongoing series using a tabletop role playing game that isn't Dungeons and Dragons. No. <laughs> yes, this means what you think it means. Critical Role is going to try using their monumental platform to promote their own new system. But what does this really mean for the industry and for you and me? Let's start with the audience. If you haven't checked the numbers in a while, Critical Role has over 1 million followers on Twitch, where their live stream is literally the highest earning stream on the entire social platform. Critical Role also has about 2 million subscribers on YouTube, not nearly as impressive in the entire YouTube landscape, but they are by far the biggest YouTube channel related to D&D or general tabletop role-playing games, typically exceeding 750,000 views per episode of their main show. Mind you, their main show is their third campaign of Dungeons and & Dragons, and as of right now, we have no hard evidence saying that their main show is going to change, but there's good reason to believe it will change. We'll talk about that in a minute. The important question for now is, what about Critical Role attracts and maintains this audience of millions? Of course, some portion of their audience only watches Critical Role because they are playing D&D. Play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to assume that's a tiny portion because the majority of each three to five hour episode consists of role play, not gameplay. Meaning there's another portion, probably a much, much larger portion who watches Critical Role because they love the cast of funny, kind, and charismatic people putting on a fantastic performance week after week. Nerdy ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. We play Dungeons and Dragons! <laughs> or that, we also do that, I guess. Uh, even if I have it completely backwards, most viewers do only watch because of the system, not the cast. That means what? Only 20%, heck, 10% of 1 million people, so only 100,000 people will watch their new show with their new game? 100,000 views is still more exposure than almost any other TTRPG besides D&D has ever received. The best exception I can think of is when Critical Role did a one-shot episode with Call of Cthulhu a couple years ago, and I'm pretty sure it has over a million views by now. But that Call of Cthulhu game was just a one-shot, my friends. This new show, Candela Obscura, is a monthly show with no hardline predetermined ending. From the announcement, this first chapter of Candela Obscura will be three standalone episodes. It doesn't say that there will be or won't be a second chapter, so to reiterate, this is the first time Critical Role has run an ongoing show using a game besides D&D. And I think this means that at least a few tens of thousands of Critical Role fans are going to buy this game, and it could immediately blow past Pathfinder and DCC and Tales of the Valiant and Shadow Dark simply because of that monumental level of exposure. Like, this game could be totally boring and it'll still sell out because they have that incredible marketing. But here are my real points for this video. One, I think the games produced by Critical Role are going to be fun. Two, I think they might be D&D's worst nightmare. And three, I think they are going to accelerate this industry level shift that Wizards of the Coast accidentally initiated in January when they tried to undermine every other publisher in the TTRPG industry taking those one at a time. The games produced by Critical Role will be fun. We know they have at least two tabletop role-playing game systems coming because they were both officially announced in April. They are Illuminated Worlds and Daggerheart. And before we take a look at those, real quick aside to point out how just a few months ago, Matt Mercer and Marisha Ray were asked in an interview, do you guys see yourselves making your own system? And they answered, Man, that would be rad. Um, uh, I mean, if ever the opportunity were to, uh, you know, arise with the right people and the right design and it made sense for the type of show we were doing, then I would love that. Yeah. So there's been a lot of talks there as well in terms of like, what would we want to get out of, you know, our own system or 
role-playing game that really does feel very critical role. And now we just got this video last month where the host says, We are thrilled to announce that Darrington Press has two, that is right, two, new RPG systems that have been cooking up for quite some time. Quite some time, you don't say. Anyway, Illuminated Worlds has now been revealed to be more of a game engine rather than one single game. Check out this announcement again. Leveraging gaming as a story mechanic, the series features the Candela Obscura tabletop role-playing game from Darrington Press, which is built on the Illuminated Worlds system. For example, I'm sure some of you are familiar with an RPG called Apocalypse World, which is pretty widely known because it pioneered a system called Powered by the Apocalypse, and that system has since been used for many games, such as Dungeon World, Uncharted Worlds, Monster of the Week, City of Mist, Thirsty Sword Lesbians, Root, and many, many more. Meaning, Critical Role must be extremely confident that their new Illuminated Worlds system is awesome enough to serve as a foundation for many games in the future, and Candela Obscura is just the first one we're seeing. Let's hear the basics of the system from Mercer himself. Illuminated Worlds is a D6 dice pool system designed for much shorter, arc-driven campaigns and packaged in a way so that it can be used with pretty much any type of setting you can think of. It was created by Strash Achimovich and Leila Edelman, two incredible game designers. After some quick Googling, that first designer is known for creating the games Scum and Villainy and Band of Blades, both of which use a D6 dice pool system called Forged in the Dark, which I can only assume was pioneered by the award-winning RPG Blades in the Dark, but I didn't dig that deep. Point is, Critical Role's game designers are very familiar with how to make a great D6 dice pool game system, and that's how we got Illuminated Worlds. Then, Candela Obscura was designed by Spencer Stark, creator of the award-winning RPG Alice is Missing and part of the design team behind Kids on Brooms, both being very popular rules light games focused on mystery and roleplay, which seem to be exactly what Candela Obscura is going for. We haven't seen the full rules for these systems yet, but the announcement included, we'll be releasing a Candela Obscura quick start guide. It'll give you a basic rundown of the game, the setting, the characters, and even an adventure to play through at your own tables. You'll be able to download it for free Thursday, May 25th, ahead of the premiere. Plus, if you're more of a visual learner, our very own lead game designer, the amazing Spencer Stark, will walk you through everything you need to know in our How to Play video over on our YouTube channel that same morning. So yeah, this is all happening tomorrow, and this is exactly what I said in my recent video about how easy it is to learn new RPGs. They pretty much all have short, free PDFs of basic rules, and at this point, videos explaining how to play. But I digress. The thing about this system is that it's D6 based and designed for one shots or mini campaigns. This is kind of cool because we know Candela Obscura, the show, will have standalone episodes, so you don't need to watch a backlog of hundreds of hours to get caught up with the story. But I think most Critical Role fans enjoy watching the characters grow and change over the course of long campaigns as they are known for producing. And 100% anecdotally, I prefer D20 systems, so that's why I'm more looking forward to their other game, Daggerheart. At the time of making this video, here's everything we know about Daggerheart. The game is called Daggerheart. It's a fun and fresh update to the fantasy genre of RPGs, and it's been designed for long-term campaign play and character progression. We've been working on it for a while, and we're super excited for you to check it out. And we're also expecting a preview of both Daggerheart and the Illuminated World system both online and in person at Gen Con this year, you lucky little Gen Con attendees. That's it. So we don't even know for sure that it's a D20 system, but as someone said online, Critical Role's logo is a D20. It would be really weird if their main game wasn't a D20 system. And why do I say their main game? Because it's time to speculate. But first, if you also love D20 systems, consider supporting what I do by picking up a set of Bob World Builder dice. Just kidding, I just found out these dice have pretty much sold out. I think there's less than five total sets left. So thank you, thank you so much to all 500-ish people who have picked up uh, one of these sets. It really means a lot. But in the meantime, the best way you can support me is actually by joining Patreon. Joining Patreon gets you into our private Discord community. And I even just posted my first 
Patreon exclusive video over there. Might start doing that more often. I don't know, it seemed like people like it. So consider joining Patreon. It really is the best way to support the channel and this community. Thank you. All right. I am not alone in thinking that Critical Role is ready to shed Dungeons and & Dragons and use their monumental platform to promote their own tabletop RPGs on their main show. Why not have their wonderful, charismatic cast play their own D20 fantasy RPG built for long campaigns and character progression, maintaining all the talent and qualities that their audience loves? That's why this game, Daggerheart, is D&D's nightmare. Guys, we're coming up on the final season of Stranger Things. Say what you want about Critical Role boosting D&D's popularity. They absolutely helped. But I've already made a video about how Google searches with the term D&D actually track with the release of each new season of Stranger Things. It's been so much more influential than Critical Role. That series has accumulated over 1.26 billion hours of watch time. Billion. But the Stranger Things well is about to run dry. There's never been a better time for Critical Role to say, okay, D&D, we helped each other grow for the last seven or eight years, but we see that you're about to lose your biggest mainstream hookup, so we're ready to go our own way with our own successful Amazon show, comic book series, clothing line, accessories, collectibles, and now role-playing game systems. Look, I imagine that D&D will always be some part of what Critical Role produces because they obviously love D&D. Play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> it's how they started, and it might always be what Critical Role is best known for, but it would be silly if they didn't at least try to use Daggerheart as a replacement for D&D in their next long campaign. With a loyal audience of millions buying up all that other Critical Role merchandise, I think the Daggerheart rulebook has the potential to outsell every other big RPG publisher besides Wizard of the Coast in the year that it's released. Now. They probably won't make Daggerheart the backbone of their main show until their next long-term campaign. But if they wanted to, and I don't know if Critical Role would take it this far, but if they wanted to, I'm sure they could convert their current 5e campaign to Daggerheart on camera, showing everyone just how easy it is to switch from 5e to their own system. That would be an incredible power play, but do you think they would do that? Let me know in the comments. It just feels a little too aggressive for Critical Role, but there's still a part of me that would kind of love to see it happen. Regardless, that is how I think Critical Role's new RPGs are going to accelerate the industry level shift that Wizard of the Coast accidentally started with the OGL controversy. Wizard of the Coast showed their lawful evil side and many people who were having fun with 5e made it a personal priority to at least test the waters of other games. However, a couple months have passed. They've just gone back to thinking that eh, it's kind of too hard to learn new games or they don't have enough time to learn a new game. Oh, Critical Role has a new system coming out? Yeah, I'll try it. Because it's only a matter of priorities. First, people felt pushed away from D&D, but had little else to hold on to because 5e might have been all they knew. Now, many people are being pulled toward Critical Role's games because they love Critical Role. These quote-unquote nerdy-ass voice actors are in the perfect position to get their fun, new games immediately into the hands and onto the tables of at least a few tens of thousands of people, and the community will continue this shift from being tightly clustered around one monolithic brand to a more genuine tabletop RPG community that simply shares a love for these games. And I think that's better for everybody. If you agree, please like this video, share it with your game group, and check out this video about a free and easy D20 fantasy game. Maybe even consider getting a set of those dice or joining the wonderful patrons who support this community. Thank you for your support and keep building.